While perusing the many perplexing sites we are yet to cover on our channel, we stumbled across something which could quite possibly be a massive clue – evidence left as to the method of construction of many ancient sites found all over Earth. Our channel has, for a long time, put forward the hypothesis that a highly advanced worldwide civilization once flourished here on our planet. We believe that many of the ancient sites which display unexplained architecture were left by this lost people, placed far within our distant past. And once one begins to investigate these ruins with this possibility in mind, you start to notice some compelling things regarding these amazing sites. For example, the metal clamps we have previously covered, often created using impressive mixes of alloys and somehow poured molten could now be seen as earlier architectural examples less than the mortarless, mysteriously notched stonework, also found in similar areas all over the world, with the more precise and thus more impressive stonework, seen as a later, more sophisticated method of construction. What's more, although virtually all ancient sites have been dated to the most convenient suspects within known taught history, there also exists the numerous caves and temples hewn from the solid bedrocks, carved with such accuracy and vision, they elude recreation even by our modern-day technology. And while looking at an amazing rock-cut cave within the site of Mamalapuram, India, a site we are now convinced was left by this same civilization, a curious piece of evidence seemingly presented itself. Upon the roughly finished roof of this ancient cave is evidence left by the same technology used to not only cut the astonishingly huge Long Yu Caves, but also the abandoned Langshan Quarry, both in China. This discovery, we believe, is only just the beginning of a realization that these telltale signatures are present at many other unexplained sites around the world. We have long stipulated that many of the ancient ruins claimed by our more modern-day ancestors are most likely not their actual creations. If the structure does date to this more recent age, they are usually found to be sitting upon the telltale remnants of a highly precise ancient foundation originally left by this elusive group. Who were these amazing people? When did they flourish here on Earth? What happened to them? Why did they never record how they created such wonders? Although it is easy for skeptics to argue that the caves and architecture were merely created through excruciating hard labor, any practical demonstration of this has eluded us for many centuries. Furthermore, many of the extensive cave excavations found all over the world, presumably dating back to this bygone age, are all absent any waste as if the machine tasked with creating these underground labyrinths turned stone to dust. And although the technology and or possible machinery tasked with the job has evaded modern archaeology to this point, it is clearly another piece of evidence which takes us one step closer to unraveling the true history of our planet. There are a number of seemingly impossible ruins and even still functioning temples which can be found dotted all over India. Most of these structures, somehow conjured from solid bedrock or stone hillside, with such accuracy they baffle all who explore them. What's more, there is also evidence left upon some of these structures. Mysterious scarring, which not only suggests some form of machining actually having been involved in the construction, but these same mysterious marks can also be found upon ancient sites in other parts of the world. And while researching any other compelling fragments of evidence that may have been left upon these ancient Indian temples, we have stumbled upon yet another ancient site, also within India, which is displaying the same compelling, telltale signs of ancient machining, which was possibly responsible for the construction of these sites. The Hoysalaswara Temple in Halabadu is an incredible structure, apparently built a mere 900 years ago, yet possesses columns and other features created with such precision they actually indicate the existence of advanced ancient technology. Discovered by Praveen Mohan, symmetrical grooves found upon many of the multi-ton, complex designed temples columns. These grooves would be impossible to achieve using a hammer and chisel, thus they are a remnant left by another, 
unknown construction process, most likely a lathe. Additionally, although turning lathes were indeed in existence as far back as 900 years ago, the accuracy of the grooves when they were made, the precision and symmetry visible makes the columns seemingly impossible to have been created with such primitive technologies. Another curious discovery at the temple in the hands of a god known as Masana Bhairava is a clear representation a type of gear mechanism called planetary gears. As Praveen puts it, quote, the outer gear has 32 teeth and the inner gear has exactly half the number or 16 teeth, which is precisely how we use reduction gears today. If this were just an imaginary tool, how could the ancient sculptors come up with this gear ratio of 2 to 1? Even more interesting, we can also see a fastener that goes around this mechanism and is locked in at the center. Today we use the exact same technology. How could primitive people working with chisels and hammers imagine such a mechanism?" End quote. It seems the more we understand about the history of our planet, the more people begin to notice regarding the secrets of our past. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. There are many enigmatic, giant ruins that can be found within Japan. Super megaliths, so old, a number of the largest have eroded away to a state of unrecognition. An archaeological site which at the time of its life would have undoubtedly dwarfed nearly all other civilizations upon Earth. A civilization which far outstretches the modern urban sprawl of the Japanese coastlines. A lost super-civilization responsible for the construction of numerous pyramids found throughout the landscape, some of which are said to lay beneath several meters of Earth, which has slowly consumed them over the millennia. Amongst these curious ruins are extremely perplexing, apparently sliced megalithic stones, pyramidal capstones, and also, like many places dotted around the world, legends of giants. One of the many things Japanese culture has become renowned for over the centuries is their ability to create swords, steel weapons of a far superior quality than their rivals, giving them an edge over their foes for many centuries. One must wonder, where did this advanced knowledge of sword making come from? Was it mere ingenuity? Or descended knowledge left by a far more superior, entirely different, and far larger race of people? Many sword making technologies, which even to this day impress and perplex the many specialists who delve into the nature of this advanced metallurgy. Amongst these enigmatic and amazing swords is one in particular. One that, for obvious reasons, stands out from the rest. Known as the Norimitsu Odachi, at over 12 feet in length and weighing nearly 15 kilograms in weight, this sword was masterfully created over 2,000 years ago, with no other intention than to be used by a warrior of gigantic proportions. The Nodachi type of sword was one of the weapons of choice on the field of battle during the Namboko Cho period. During this era and far before, these swords were rarely created for decoration purposes. The price of their construction, the time and care needed in creating just one single sword, meant that most were indeed manufactured for the purpose of battle. Additionally, the cost of creating such an enormous sword would have been considerable. Was this enormous sword once used by an equally enormous warrior? Understandably. Many have denied such explanations as a tangible possibility. Yet regardless, a satisfactory explanation for the creation of such an amazing object remains to be seen. The Forager Population Paradox Along with a number of other paradoxes found in a number of academic fields of research, is now finally rediscovering much regarding our past vindicating proof of what we have long argued is still hidden. In many areas, buried under meters of earth or virtually impenetrable forests, chapters of lost human history lay waiting to be found, which due to our research into similarities and differentiating factors within unexplained ruins, at least three advanced civilizations once lost, we claim are now finally being rediscovered. Geological research has proven again and again, through the dating of many natural processes, the submergence of land masses, along with studies into erosion rates. Along with carbon radiation dating, 
Many ruins, once claimed as a mere few thousand years old, have inadvertently, regardless of the subsequent conservative attempts at dating these zones, are now shown to have been undeniably far older. Yet the forager population paradox is scientific evidence which demonstrates that human civilizations did indeed once experience a global catastrophe. Known by many names, the Great Flood, the Great Deluge, Rapture, along with many other names in many ancient texts found all around the world. Only a paradox due to it not fitting with a paradigm. Population growth is a science which can accurately track the history and indeed ancestral origins and age of a species. Yet there lay a problem with the study of human population in particular. At some point within a now forgotten history, the human race experienced an event which reset our population growth. It would seem that even the great effort of bending carbon datings, which we allege are dishonest agings of ancient ruins and the civilizations that built them, was still not conservative enough to hide this truth. Once a thriving ancient population seemingly vanished. Data supported, or rather corroborated by the many unfinished and destroyed ancient relics we often discuss on our channel. According to the proceedings of National Academy of Science USA, in a research project titled Periodic Catastrophes Over Human Evolutionary History Are Necessary to Explain the Forager Population Paradox, they state, and I quote, Investigating multiple demographic scenarios in a large sample of human and chimpanzee populations, we find that periodic catastrophes, combined with plausible fertility or mortality reductions, can reasonably generate zero population growth. Our findings bolster arguments about the role of intergenerational cooperation in supporting the colonizing potential of human populations once released from catastrophes." End quote. Simply put, the only way to explain the population growth or lack of at certain points of our species' history in comparison to its persistently claimed age, the paradox, or the current population, proves that we did indeed experience catastrophe. An event long denied as ever being experienced by our species, with the last acceptably permitted event, K2 having been experienced only by the dinosaurs. We find the data, the paradox, and the methodological truths it exhibits highly compelling.